QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Bank Reconciliation Month 2 Deposits. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're going to be doing the bank reconciliation for the second month of operations, having done the first bank reconciliation in prior presentations. The second month of bank reconciliations will be similar to what you can expect going forward and should be much easier than the first bank reconciliation. So it's good to have these two side by side, which is why they basically we put them side by side. So you can see the differences in terms of the challenges for the first bank reconciliation, the second one then reflecting what should be basically the norm going forward, and that norm should be an easier norm. <laughs> so we're going to first open up our reports by going to the reports drop down. We're going to then go down to the company and financial, open up the balance sheet. So we'll open up the balance sheet. I'm going to be customizing this report. We're going to then say that this, this is going to be from 010121 to 022821. So it's going to be ending. We're looking at the ending date here of uh, February. We'll say OK. So now we're going to be reconciling as of this point. As of this point in time, we have 1092488 in uh, the checking account. I also want to open the prior bank reconciliation for the first month that we put together. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go to the reports drop down. We're going to go to the banking. I want to look at the previous reconciliation. And I would like to see the one for the detail. Let's look at the detailed reconciliation, not the summary. Say OK. And it should open that uh, detailed reconciliation. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. We're focusing here in. So make it really big and move this over. We're focusing in on the items that did not clear because these are going to be the reconciling items. So uh, and this will be similar to kind of that beginning balance problem we saw in the first month. And you'll be able to kind of see it as we move forward going forward here too. Because these items that had not cleared in uh, January, which we had written in January, we expect to clear in February. We had that same problem uh, in the first month, except it was more of a problem because we hadn't entered any data prior to that point in time. We hadn't, we just entered the beginning balance that was on the trial balance in our prior accounting system in the cutoff date on January 1st. And so we hadn't, we hadn't had these outstanding checks in our system at that point. So you'll kind of see in this and going forward, they will be in there and we can then move forward and it'll just be an easier way to, to move forward. So we'll talk more about that in a second. First, let's take a look at our uh, bank statement. So here's our Excel sheet. You should have a copy of this Excel sheet or uh, a PDF file, or you can just follow along here. That would be fine as well. So this is the second tab of the Excel sheet. So we're on the second tab for February, month two. And uh, up top, we're going to have the beginning balance. We have a similar layout. But now, of course, this beginning balance will be the same as the ending balance in the prior bank rec. And since we reconciled to that ending balance, then we will be okay going forward uh, with what we have thus far. So in other words, that's going to be, uh, you know, the beginning balance, we won't have a beginning balance type of problem. So let's just review that real quick, because you might say, well, that's not the beginning balance on our trial balance, which it won't be if I go to the if I go to the trial balance over here, and I was to change the dates to uh, 013121, then the beginning balance is that 100, 100,350. And of course, that's because that's including what we have on our books that wasn't included on the bank statement, meaning if I go to the bank reconciliation for the prior month, the difference between the two, the beginning balance of the current statement or the ending balance of the prior statement, the 89,335 is these outstanding checks. So these outstanding checks are that reconciling difference that we're going to be dealing with going forward. So when we're talking about the beginning balance on the, on the bank rec, that's going to be according to the bank statement you know, that, that has that those timing differences, the differences that we have now reflected in the prior month's bank reconciliation. So so that's going to be the beginning balance. If I then go to the balance sheet, let's change this back to the end of the second month, 022821. Now we have the ending balance, which is the 109288. That does not tie out to the ending balance here either, which is the 108968. Uh, that's going to be, be because we have outstanding items down below uh, I mean, in our system that haven't cleared the bank statement as well in the second month. So here's basically the recap that we'll have beginning balance, additions, subtractions, ending balance. 
Then we have the detail of the deposits, the additions, and the subtractions, including the checks and other kind of activities that would be reducing the balance that gives us the detail of that breakout. So let's go back to the QuickBooks and let's open up then our bank reconciliation for month two by going to the banking dropdown. We're going to go to the reconcile and let's imagine we don't have this in here yet. This is what you would typically see. So last reconciliation, it's saying, hey, look, you reconciled last time as of January 31st, 2021. And so they would assume then they'll probably give you a date of 228.21 at the end of the second month. Then we'll have the beginning balance, the 89,335. And that, once again, will not be the beginning balance on the books. It doesn't tie out to what's on our balance sheet as of 131.21. But it's tracking the beginning balance that we've reconciled to, the cleared balance on the bank on the bank reconciliation. So this should tie out, of course, to the beginning balance on the bank reconciliation, not, not on our books. And so that's that's the beginning balance. And then we're going to have our ending balance here, which is going to be the 104,689.68. So 104,689.68. Let me check that one more time. 104,689.68. 104,689.68. Okay. If you have two screens, it's easier to do this if you have this thing side by side. We're not going to be entering service charges or interest here. You can. I don't like to do it here. However, I'd like to manually put it into the register and then check it off in the normal kind of process. So that's what we'll do here. So I'm going to go say continue. And here is our information. So we have the period end 228. We can hide data after the, the point in time that our, our system is, is reconciling as of, in this case, after 228. We don't need to here because I don't have any data after that. So you, it doesn't matter if you check this off or not. You'll have the same data in our data set. And then you could mark all. I'm not going to not going to do that because we're going to have to tick and tie them out. So you can unmark them all. Down here we have the beginning balance. So that beginning balance once again tying out to the bank statement beginning balance. We have the ending uh, the ending balance of the 104,689. That's on the bank statement ending balance. And then currently we have the 89,335, which is the cleared balance, which right now ties out to the beginning balance because we haven't checked anything else off yet. As we check things off, it'll change that balance. And then we have the difference down here. Once these two are the same, that means that we have found everything on the bank statement on our, our books. And therefore, this difference will be zero. Everything that we have not checked off will then be the outstanding items, things that we put on our books, but have a timing difference and have not yet cleared the bank. So that's going to be our process. Let's start to go through it. We'll just do the deposits this time. So we have then the deposits uh, will be over here. And we're, we're, remember, as we do this, we're going to be tying from the deposits to the bank statement. Uh, one other thing I just want to note as we do this, uh, note that if, if you go over to the bank reconciliation, we were concerned with these uncleared transactions. These are the, the reconciling transactions. These five checks had not cleared, even though we wrote them in January had not cleared the bank by January 31st because they weren't on the bank statement. So we would expect these to clear in the current time period. So let's just check that real quick. I'd say, okay, the six, the checks 1006, there's check 1006. I'm going to make a little yellow dot just to indicate that's something that was written in January but didn't clear in January that is now clearing in February. So we have the timing difference kind of on both sides, both sides of the cutoffs, meaning the beginning cutoff and then which is January 31st or, or, or February 1st, and then the ending cutoff, which is going to be uh, February 28th, these timing differences. So here's the 500 checks 1007. So I'm going to say, all right, there's a little yellow dot there. And then here is uh, Verizon uh, 1009. Notice that one isn't here. So that one hasn't cleared in two months. So I'm kind of concerned about that Verizon bill. Maybe that one got lost in the mail. And so we're, we might have to double check and say, hey, do we need to pay Verizon? Because it doesn't look like that check went through. And then we got 1011. Uh, 1, 1. So here is that one. So that one has cleared. That's what we would expect. I can't make it yellow because it keeps doing funny stuff. And then we've got this uh, 62880. So that was written in January and it's now clearing in February. And then we also had this deposit. 26,670. So 26,670 here that was written uh, in or re received in January, but it didn't clear the bank uh, until February. 
So it's just it's useful to note those so because that's the timing. That's the overlap. That's the timing difference on the cutoff, the beginning cutoff time period date. And then we'll be left with ending cutoff time period dates. And that'll result in, back to the checking account, the items that are unchecked still, the things that are still unchecked, will be the cutoff date at the end of the time period, which will be the reconciling items as of the end of the time period. Okay, so let's go through this. Uh, when we look at the deposits, remember that uh, the deposits should be fairly close in date. The timing difference should be fairly close because when you make a deposit into the checking account, it shouldn't take very long for it to clear the bank. So you would think it would be like within three days. Uh, also note that the major problem with deposits is with the grouping of the deposits, depending on the type of industry you have. So you want to make sure that you are depositing into your system in the same grouping as they will appear on the bank statement. Common problems happen with uh, if you have credit card deposits, the credit card company might group your deposits in a way that uh, that doesn't line up to what you're entering in the system. And if that happens, then you're going to have to count and you pull out the calculator and figure out, try to match up the deposits and it's a mess. So you want to see if you can tie out what you put into the system to how they will be grouped as they hit the bank. One tool to do that is that undeposited funds tool. Also, the other issue is with people have cash transactions. They might put the cash transactions into the books as they receive cash. And, the, and then it doesn't tie out to when you deposit in the bank because the bank deposit happened all in one lump sum. Again, you'll have to add up the cash transactions to the lump sum transaction to try to reconcile. And you don't want to have to do that. You want the reconciliation to be as easy as possible to do that. Use the undeposited funds if you, if you have one of those conditions that will take place to group the deposits in the same format in your books as you expect them to be in the bank statement. So here we have the 20. So we're always going to be going from the bank statement to the books because everything on the bank statement needs to be on our books. If it's on the bank statement and it's not on our books, we probably have to fix our books. Or there might be an error on the bank statement, which is not likely. That's not usually the case. And then if it's on our books and not on, our, and not on the bank statement, then uh, that's what we expect to happen because those will be outstanding items. So I'm going to be going from the bank statement to the books. So here's the 26,670. Here's the 26,670 here. Looks good. Going to go back over. I'm going to make this green as we go. Saying found that one. Looks good. Here's the 12,250. Uh, Here's the 12,250. Looks good. So I'm going to highlight that one. Say that one is good. Here's the 2,025. 2,025. Looks good. Going to make that green. And so that's it for the deposits. If I go back on over here, notice we haven't found this deposit. And you would expect it to be in the bank statement because it was written on the 23rd. I would expect it to have cleared by the 28th. So I might be a little concerned with that. But if I want to check if it has cleared, I can just go into the bank system and see if it cleared in March. If it cleared in March, that's okay. It's just a timing difference. That's what we would expect to happen. Although we might want to say, hey, look, why did it take so long? You would think it would, take, it would clear a little sooner. But the fact that it cleared is, is good for our bank reconciliation. That's what we expect to happen. We expect things to be here and not on the bank statement, those are going to be the uncleared types of transactions. So we're going to stop here, and then we're going to continue on with the other side, which is going to be the payment side of things, ticking and tying that out as we go next time. So I'm going to hit the leave button. You can leave this, this kind of setup. Go, go take a break. You can log out of QuickBooks and come back into it at a later point, which is nice. So I'm going to say leave, and then you can close everything up and come back to it next time as we will do.